Hello, in this video we'll talk about nucleotide probes and its application in molecular biology. Nucleotide probes are RNA or DNA oligonucleotide sequences that can be targeted against specific DNA or RNA sequences and they can bind via Watson and Crick base pairing. So there could be two types of probes, DNA probes and RNA probes. In this video we'll talk about what are the application of nucleotide probes, how probes are generated and how to design a probe. Before starting the video we'll talk about a little bit about the applications of probe and later on we would elaborate on that part. So stay tuned till the end of this video. Nucleotide probes are used in techniques like southern or northern hybridization, in situ hybridization, etc. At any point you want to learn more about these techniques, you can click on the i button. Other than that, probe based techniques are used in forensic sciences and also in genomics to detect mutations, genomic locus or let's say to screen a genomic DNA library. Now let's understand how to generate a probe or how to design a probe. So this is a mRNA of interest that we want to detect using a nucleotide probe. So first and foremost we need to have a sequence information that we want to detect. So the sequence information can be obtained via several sequence repositories such as NCBI, EMBL or DDBJ. Once we get the sequence information, we need to understand how to generate a specific probe which would only bind to that sequence and should not hybridize or recognize other sequences. So if this is an mRNA, there are multiple segments of this mRNA such as 5' UTR, 3' UTR or several exons. If we design probe against these UTRs or let's say exon-exon junctions, chances are these probes would be highly specific. Because exon to exon junctions or 5' prime or 3' prime UTRs are very much specific to one particular mRNA and it should not be found in other mRNAs as well. So this can gives a, give us nice sequence specificity. Another thing to consider while designing the probe is this length. Probe should not be too short or too long. Both of that can result in a non-specific hybridization. Now once we have the sequence information in mind, we know against whom we need to design a probe. We can extract the RNA, we can make cDNA by RT-PCR and then we can clone this cDNA of interest in a P blue script plasmid which has promoters for T3 or T7. Then we linearize the plasmid using a restriction endonuclease. Since we have T3, T7 promoters, we can use a T3 or T7 RNA polymerase to do a in vitro transcription reaction. While performing the in vitro transcription reaction, we can give specific nucleotides which are labeled. Let's say they are fluorescently labeled, let's say they are biotinylated, or let's say they are radioactively labeled. And the mRNA probe that would be generated would be also labeled, either radio labeled or let's say fluorescently labeled. And this is how we can generate our RNA probe. Now let's talk about how we can generate our DNA probe. But before that, try to understand that in order to get a particular probe, we can extract the tissue, we can extract the RNA, make cDNA, and then we can also use a primer which has a T7 or T3 sequence, right? Instead of cloning it into the vector, we can also extract the RNA from a specific location. Then we can generate the cDNA, amplify the cDNA with a primer containing the T3 or T7 promoters. That would also give us a probe which is specific and which is labeled. Now later on the strategy is same. We'll use T3, T3 or T7 RNA polymerase to do a in vitro transcription using labeled nucleotides to label the RNA probe. So these are two methods by which RNA probes can be generated. Now let's talk about how fluorescently labeled DNA probes can be generated. So let's say this is a DNA uh, probe or a portion of the DNA that we can use as a probe. How do we label it? There are several ways to label it. We can first do a 
digestion with DNA is one and then there would be several nicks in these DNA and this nicks can be recognized by DNA Pol 1 and DNA Pol 1 would repair it and remove a portion of this DNA, extend it while extension if we provide fluorescently labeled probes or let's say radio labeled probes it would incorporate in the DNA and at the result as a result we'll get a labeled DNA and this can be used as a DNA probe now let's talk about the application of nucleotide probe in details first and foremost we can understand nucleotide probes can be used in fluorescence in situ hybridization to determine in situ localization of a particular mutation or locus of a particular gene etc so fluorescence in situ hybridization is a frequently used tool in molecular biology if you want to learn more about it click here in the i button now fluorescence in situ hybridization can tell us about several aspects such as is there a mutation if there is a mutation what is the location of that particular mutation on a chromosome it can also uh, give us information about the subcellular localization of an mRNA inside a cell. Other than that, we can use radio label probes or other label probes in southern or northern hybridization to detect a DNA of interest or RNA of interest. And in order to learn more about southern or northern hybridization, click on the I button. Now, this is particularly important in forensic application because RFLP technique can be used using probes now let's say we have a crime scene we can obtain the dna we can digest the dna with restriction fragments we can do the same for two prime sus suspects suspect one and two and then we can do our northern hybrid we can do a southern hybridization and the autoradiogram would tell us that whose restriction fragment length polymorphism is kind of matching the crime scene in this case the suspect two is a match for the DNA obtained from the crime scene. If you want to learn more about RFLP, you can click on the I button. Now, let me tell you that before the discovery of PCR or high throughput sequencing, nucleotide based probes or these kind of probe based techniques were key aspects in molecular biology. Southern blot, which was discovered in 1975, DNA fingerprinting, which was discovered in 1984, all utilize these probe based methods. Now, these days we have high throughput sequencers which can tell us the sequence of a nucleotide region in a blink of an eye so in this particular era we might think that dna probes or rna probes are irrelevant but still let me tell you in several applications like fluorescence in situ hybridization fluorescently label probes are utilized very frequently and fish is utilized to detect or localized mutations, genetic counseling to determine subcellular localization of RNA or even species identification very frequently. Overall, fish is used in biomedical research or clinical diagnosis. Though these probe-based techniques are a bit irrelevant these days, still their application is done in biomedical research and clinical diagnosis. So that kind of concludes our video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can support my channel on Patreon. If you want to connect via social media, this is my profile name. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn or let's say in Twitter. And all the links are provided in the description. You can click on the link and get in touch with me. Thanks for listening. See you in the next video. Thank you.